Yeah, what's going on, y'all? Thank you for coming to my channel. My name is Wally, and you are now tuning to PBH TV. We back with some more Tucker Carlson or X. You already know X is formerly known as Twitter, and he is sitting down with Victor Davis Hanson, all right? They're about to both indulge on the legal assault that your boy Trump is facing right now. So go ahead and sit back, react with your boy. Don't forget, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and join the Patreon. Let's go, baby. If you've ever wondered why it's taken you so long to figure out what's happening now in American politics, don't blame yourself. It's not your fault. It's hard for most Americans to comprehend the total dishonesty of American liberalism. Virtually nothing the liberal says is true. And the lies are not ordinary lies. The lies are so brazen, so aggressive and unending that it's difficult for a normal person to understand what's happening. 30 years ago, for example, liberals began to lecture us, softly at first and then in an increasingly high volume, about tolerance. How could you have known then that they planned, in fact, to usher in the most intolerant age in American history? They've done that now, but few people saw it coming. We shouldn't make the same mistake again. Liberals are now telling us they plan to protect American democracy. And that's the clearest possible sign that they intend to end it. 13 months from this week, the United States will hold a national election. In a democracy, citizens can vote for the candidate of their choice. That's not just a feature, it's the defining fact of the electoral system. The people rule. They can send anyone they want to Washington because they're in charge. But this year, in the name of protecting democracy, Liberals have decided to strip Donald Trump's name from the ballot in states across the country. Trump is the front runner in the presidential race. He's currently beating Joe Biden in the polls. The fact that they want to remove his name says a lot. If they know that the people don't like him the way they feel or the way they want to make you believe, then they can leave his name on there. He's not going to win. He has no winning chance, right? But hey, look, he's leading on the polls. So you see, sometimes you gotta dig deep. Don't just stay on the surface. Don't be a surface dweller. Don't be a surface dweller. Always dig deep when you wanna know something, all right? Yet liberals have decided that you should not be allowed to elect him president. That's not democracy. It's the opposite. It's totalitarianism. Just this morning, Donald Trump appeared in court in New York in a civil case brought by the state's attorney general that was designed explicitly to keep him out of the White House. That case is part of a larger legal barrage against Trump that so far includes a total of 91 felony counts, every one of them politically motivated. But today's civil case is especially absurd. In fact, it's hard to overstate its ridiculousness. In sum, Trump stands accused of inflating the value of collateral used to secure loans, loans that he has already paid back with interest. In other words, there is no injured party in this case. The biggest banks in the world assessed the risk and they made a profit, as they almost always do. Not a single person was defrauded. For this non-crime, Trump and his children are in the process of losing their homes and their businesses. Here's MSNBC's live coverage of the hearing today. And as you watch, pay special attention to the judge in the case, Arthur N. Gorin. There he is, the judge mugging like he's on stage in a middle school play, grinning, preening for the camera. Arthur and Gorin is thrilled to be on MSNBC. It's nauseating. This is not a legal proceeding. This is a grotesque parody of the system that our forefathers created, the fairest in the world, that in the years since has been seized by power worshipers like Arthur and Gorin. This is a dangerous moment. Without a legitimate legal system, people will no longer follow the law and the country will collapse. Wow. This is not about Trump. This is about preserving the United States of America. But Trump is at the center of the story. And so today for an overview of what exactly the strategy to prevent Trump from running for president and to end our current system, we turn to Victor Davis Hanson, who joins us now. Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Thank so, you for having me, Tucker. Before we get into the details of the legal assault on Trump, which in my view isn't really about Trump, tell us what you think is at stake here. What's the overview? Hmm. 
Let's see well, what you're going to say. I think say. they've come to the conclusion that Trump represented an existential threat, and by association, all, half the country did to their vision of what they want to transform us into. And so they feel that any means necessary uh, are justified by their noble spiritual ends. I look at it like this. Any, anyone with a large following, with die hard following, will always be a threat no matter who you are. No matter what level you at, you will always be a threat. If they didn't come for you now, they will be watching. And therefore, they call it critical legal theory, just essentially, Tucker says, there's rules against stealing only because rich people don't steal, and therefore it's okay to steal. And monetar modern monetary theory says print as much money, and eventually rich people will have to pay higher taxes or have their 401ks appropriated. Same thing with the border. Uh, short term, everybody's mad at the border, but in dark rooms, they're saying to each other, in 10 years, everybody's going to appreciate what we did. We brought in 10 to 15 million new constituents. So, and I guess to put it all together, they feel that they're at a stage now where their agenda does not appeal to 51% of the people, and they either have to bring in new constituencies or change the system, the entire system of which we are acculturated to, to retain power, and that's what they're willing to do. And uh, there's no such thing anymore as theft or, or lies or any of these things uh, because they're just constructs and they're just anything that's useful to gain power is considered legitimate. Yeah, we're, we're now seeing that in the year of transparency, eh? It's not willingly, though. And anything that's not uh, useful is illegitimate and that's how they define morality and I think we're, we're very naive Tucker we don't realize that we're in the middle of a revolution we mm. think that we're still playing within the same sidelines or parameters and it's not everything's under negotiation whether it's the Senate filibuster the Electoral College new states coming in the size of the Supreme Court voting IDs uh, the genders, the foundational data of the United States, pronoun usage from the trivial to the existential, we're in the middle of a cultural, economic, political revolution. And I think we got to wake up. I mean, I, I suppose the danger is that if the average person decides that the system is illegitimate, it's not fair, it doesn't have any meaning beyond the political desires of the people administering it, then you know what present what prevents the average person from resorting to violence in other words if you have no power if your vote means nothing if the system is bs then you know why don't you take up arms for one this nation is divided number two everyone's out for themselves number three people are full of greed as a collective I don't ever see everyone coming together because, I mean, we see what happened during the pandemic. Everyone was, most households were divided. Imagine that. We're talking about married couples, or even if they're not married, but they're in relationships, families. I've seen personally myself, seen families split just because of that. So until we could get that right, then we can fight the fight. But until then, we got a long way, man, a long way. Seriously. Well, two things I think have precluded that so far. One is I call it the monastery of the mind. A lot of people just say, you know what, I'm checking out. I don't, I don't want to watch the Oscars. I don't even know what the Tonys or Emmys yeah. are. I don't watch the NBA. I, I have nothing to do with Hollywood movies. I've just created my own reality. And the other is and the, under our federalist system, we're having millions of people. This is the greatest exodus diaspora we've ever seen in our history, where people are fleeing these blue states and blue cities to red states, and they feel that I'm going to recreate America as I once understood it without having anything to do. And so far, that's kept us, that's kept us sort of viable, but they, for them, that's not enough. It's never enough to have 2 million illegal entrants or 3 million. They've got to have 8 or 9 or 10. It's not enough that Joe Biden is corrupt. It's not enough that he's non compos mentes. It's not enough that his agenda doesn't make sense. He's got to, you've got to accept more and more of him. And I think they keep pushing the envelope and these safety valves that I just mentioned, 
I don't know if they're going to be enough already, but right now, I think there's one last effort on the part of conservatives are going to say, you know what, we're going to speak up as we've never spoken up before. We're not, we're going to go after Target. We're going to go after Disney. Mm. We're going to say that we're going to go after the three gender movement and we're going to try to win this election. We're going to try to win the house. We're going to try to win the representative. We just have to unite behind and we'll see if that works. I'm really afraid. Everybody says democracy is in danger, but I think if, they feel that they have the majority of the people, and I think the majority of the people are uh, against this progressive view, uh, Jacobin agenda, and they still can't find power, then we're going to be in new territory. We're, we're in new territory now. And so there are legitimate efforts to rectify the, and stop this madness, and let's see what happens in 2024. But I don't think it works anymore just to migrate to a red state or to drop out of the popular culture. You've got to get control of the political apparatus of the country through elections. And, if, and your worry is legitimate. If you can't do it through fair elections, then what do you do? So I think this election, I know everybody says that, that each election is paramount, but this one is very important because we're in the middle of a revolution and it's our only avenue to a counter-revolution to return to normality. What, what would you say to the people who stopped paying their cable bill and moved to Florida and feel like everything's fine because their neighborhood is fine. What, why is that a bad strategy, dropping out and moving? Because they can find you. And by that, I mean Florida or Tennessee or living in Texas is a great advantage than living in California or Michigan or Oregon or Washington or Maryland. But eventually the federal government is not satisfied to leave you alone. And so when you go on your Google search, it will be calibrated by an algorithm to make sure that you have results that don't represent reality. And we're in a federal system where we have $33 trillion in debt, and there's only three ways to get out of it. You either have to inflate all of our currency, which we're trying to do, I suppose, or we're going to have to appropriate capital, which they've talked about, you know, giving credit to Social Security years by taking 401k money, or you're going to have to renounce the debt, and that's going to affect all of us. And I don't need to mention that a lot of this crime is going across state lines, and you can be in red state Texas, and the federal government can say you can't protect the Texas border, or maybe it can, it can redefine the American border as the border with Oklahoma and tell it Texas, you're not sending your illegals northward, but you're not going to be able to stop them coming into your state because we've targeted you for a radical demographic change. <laughs> so it's a stopgap stop gap sanctuary, but That's it shouldn't crazy. roll us into the idea that, that it's a solution. The solution is to take back the Congress, to ensure the Supreme Court is a traditional Supreme Court, and to win the presidency. But unfortunately, the Republican Party, which we all look to, I don't look to it very much anymore, it has lost seven out of the last eight popular votes, it hasn't won 51% since George H.W. Bush did it by bringing in Lee Atwater in 1988. Mm. And we decided we don't want to ever win that way again. It was too ugly, they thought. So they, I guess the idea on the national level is to win, uh, to lose nobly and, and never to win ugly. Wow. You see? The more you think you know, you learn something every day. Hey, if you like what you saw, you already know what I'm going to say. Like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Definitely hit the notification bell. This was a good interview right here. If you want to see more, make sure you go on Tucker Carlson's page on X, right? See you guys on the next one. Love, y'all.